Hello everyone and welcome to another special episode of my Let's Play World Tanks. This is a uh, coverage of the, what do you want to call it, the November tournament that we just took play part in. Um, it took place over Thanksgiving so I had to like space this video out a bit. And unfortunately we really didn't get too far but I'll get to that later. In the meantime, uh, I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving and I'm back in the saddle here so to speak. I'm getting back into the swing of things. I updated, I'm using Vegas now instead of uh, Power Director, which I was using, so I get to experiment a bit with using Vegas. It's, uh, the learning curve's about the size of a mountain, to say the least. But, yeah, I'll learn. Hopefully I can do a little bit more stuff with the videos that I want to do now that I'm using a different program. But we'll see. I have plenty of ideas coming up that we need to uh, toy with and see what happens. But, yeah, so, as I'm commenting in the background here, it's a nice little tank line we have running up there, the four Panzer IVs. I'll get into our strategy in a bit, though. I first need to address the fact that we were playing uh, against two people, which, unfortunately, it's not a whole lot you can do if half your team doesn't show up. Because we have that happen to us, too. But, yeah, when the only two people on your team shows up, it's not even fun for the other team who's playing against you. So, it really uh, didn't help these guys at all that they were a completely public team from what we were able to assess it seemed like they just opened it up for anyone to join and so when no one shows up there's no one to blame because you obviously didn't have a clan supporting you or anything you just picked random people and hoped that they decided to come on board with the uh, correct times and dates and everything else but overall I mean our idea was a pretty interesting one we had four PZ4s and a tier 2 scout the T2 light U.S. tank. Right. It's a uh, You've already let us know it's an interesting are. idea because we were toying with the idea of using a they lot of fire do. all at once, we'll which is down. what we're doing here, prioritizing uh, targets and yep, just yep, dumping yep. tons of that 7.5 shells, and then uh, Why, yeah, having the scout know. find the targets for us. So we just sit at long range because the PZ4 actually has the longest going? sight range out of all the mediums, but tank. unfortunately, it's I don't know. It's I feel it's probably one of the better tier 5 tanks for mobility and sight range standpoints. Gun-wise, yeah, it's pretty good. I'm not necessarily sure the KV would have been a good choice, because I've had KVs bounce off the turret of the PZ-4 tons of times. But then again, when you're using gold rounds, everything goes through. We decided to uh, switch to gold rounds in the later game, but at this initial one we were just using standard rounds, because everything penetrates pretty much. But, to say the least, it's a simple two on five game, so it wasn't really fair for them. Not a whole lot we can do about it. Not a whole lot they could do about it. But it was like a good practice. We tried out a strategy, saw how it was going to work out, and just had to uh, evaluate what we were going to do in the next level. The break was what? It was Tuesday, and then we didn't resume until Saturday. So it was quite a bit of a delay in between games, which gave us time to build up our crews, do other things in the meantime. But yeah, back to the PZ-4s. We had four PZ-4s, all fully upgraded, all with their full engine, full radio, full uh, Panther slash Tiger turret, and the L70 7.5 centimeter gun, which is, like I said, one of the better tier 5 guns that you can get, at least uh, for a medium tank, I should say. I just purely like the rate of fire on it. I was firing, as you can see there, by about, what, three and three quarters seconds. So... Relatively good rate of fire, and then uh, after that, it's just, it's a super accurate gun, as you can see. Quickly centers on target. The tank's fast enough that if worse came to worse, we could retreat back to our base. But, at least for this initial round, we were planning to go to the center of town there, form a gun line, and have our scout find the targets for us. We would all take shots from long range, hopefully out of their sight range. Because we had tested that theory that KVs wouldn't be able to see Panzer IVs in that village area at the extreme range. But, it didn't exactly work out how we wanted to later. But yeah, so this game's gonna wind up, and so I actually talk a bit okay. in the lobby here about what happened. So we just got a technical victory for our second match here, and we'll probably end up getting it for the third, as only two of their members had shown up to the tournament. So sadly, we're not going to really get to play this one, but we'll move on to the next one, and hopefully uh, do better there. And there's our third victory. Sadly, it's I wish that the other team didn't sign up because of the fact that it takes up a spot another active team probably could have used. 
So had they not signed up and allowed another team to come in, I mean, not for the fact that we won, but more for the fact that another team could have used their spot and hopefully could have advanced. So another victory here. We'll see what happens on Saturday. All right. So through practice, we were determining that the best tanks were to use were the Panzer IVs, like I've said before. The turret is pretty heavily armored. The gun is super accurate. The vision is great. The speed is excellent. So what our strategies were, were to initially go into the center of town at the very uh, center of the board, I believe that's the E and F lines. Sit there behind the road, use our scout tank to spot the tanks as they come in, and then fire at long range to do what we can to take them out. So. Focusing on the target at a time, obviously using the 7.5s to our advantage to take out uh, targets with high rate of fire and very great penetration. So, with that said, we did have to Let's adapt because we were down four players to five. For some reason, two of the people who said they would be there did not decide to show up. It, it happens. It was also a holiday weekend, so people oh making God, it is kind people. of a uh, anyway, get the town, uh, thing that I couldn't guarantee. I mean, it, you can't blame people when they have the holidays going on or with family and everything else. It just happened to work out that I was able to make it home or make it back to my uh, where I'm at now on in my apartment. In, uh, on Saturday as opposed to staying up with my family still so not a big deal for some of us for others I guess they couldn't do it and it happens it was just a poorly placed tournament in terms of time oh well but we adapted here because we focused on becoming a uh, we wanted to become a very quick attack force here we decided to have three PZ4s followed by a KV for long range support and we were going to cruise through the town, letting Lane here take the lead because he had uh, optics, I believe, on his Panzer IV, whereas I just had camo netting, uh, the ammo rammer, and what else did I have? And then the gun lane drive. I believe that's what I had. Not 100% sure, but yeah. So anyway, yes, that's what we were doing. And so we had uh, Lane lead so that he'd be able to spot tanks before any of us because he'd have maximum sight range allowed in the game by doing the optics in the tank that we currently selected. And so we decided that, well, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we're a small force. They expect us to be defending and turtling. And so we decided to push through the town as hard as we could. Just weave around, try and find a way through because they probably wouldn't have expected a four-tank platoon to come around through anywhere. Like I said, they probably would have expected us to turtle up I was hoping that that's what they were going to expect us to do, and that we'd be able to just hop on the capture point, forcing them to turn around, and we'd have the advantage, as they'd have to come to us again. Nice. Pedal to the metal. But, unfortunately, as we'll find out in a bit, that strategy was kind of flawed. It did work in theory initially, we made it all the way here without a single contact, but they seemingly had completely upgraded all their camo skills on their tank crews, right, which is something that I only had on a few of my guys. A lot of them had uh, repairs, so unfortunately, they were able to spot us. Well, they weren't able to spot us. They were, uh, well, hidden enough just so that we weren't able to spot them, which unfortunately ended up causing us a loss here. But then again, when you're playing four on five, maybe we should have hit around in the back corners and, uh, drew them out to us, taking them out one at a time. But we decided to go ahead and try and go for the yep, cap. Well. Figured we could take the KV as a loss if we get on the cap and take the yeah, win real quick. So we spotted the KV. He's at yeah, super long range. Me, but unfortunately, it would only figure that I wouldn't do anything, even with gold rounds. And he'd disappear again. And of course, I lose vision. So unfortunately, I'm sitting here in the open. They're going to have vision on me as they're not hiding behind anything. But we, uh, take care of him. We, cannot we almost had it, it looks like here. I wasn't really paying attention. I was busy uh, focusing on shooting the tanks and worrying about the fact that we had things coming at us. So, um, we lost Vaughn to, oof, that was brutal. They must have been using gold rounds in those KVs. But we lost the KV of ours to combined fire the PC-4 who just kept circling him. And then we kind of got stuck there. So, yep. we decided that the yeah, next that time, we're probably going to move into a more defensive list, or defensive stance. Try and play like a four-tank platoon should play. 
So with that said, we will swing to the next video here. So for a second round here, we definitely decided that we needed to camp out a bit. It would have uh, been more advantageous had we started off this way, draw them out to us. But it's just, we uh, we want to take advantage of the fact that we were hoping they wouldn't expect it. And uh, they kind of didn't, but we also got caught red-handed. So it happens. So we're planning over this time to go position ourselves with one guy kind of spotting in the center. And then push us over to the the um, the little windmill over here. So that we could take advantage of the buildings. Kind of surprise them as we wouldn't think they'd be coming up this way. We figured they'd come up through the center or through the town. And so we'd be able to pop them as they hopped onto our cap zone from long range. Well, semi-long range over here. But... It takes a little bit to get our KVs all the way up there, and the positioning isn't exactly the best for cover for them. Luckily, my tank's small enough I could take advantage of the cover, for whatever it's worth. Now, this is something we didn't practice at all. We had to come up with this on the fly. Our initial idea for what we did during our practice kind of contingent around the fact we are going to have five people and having a tier 2 scout to basically figure out where they are, where they're going, and keep eyes on target at all times, giving us the advantage to take the range shots all the time until uh, we kind of ran out of the spacing that we had and they would eventually collapse on us, and which at that time we would have hoped that we would have okay, eliminated well, quite a few people. Spot. So, no, right. having not practiced this, it really kind of uh, comes down to the fact that we just have to improvise. And again, it it's something they can't do if you play short a player. Sadly, there's nothing that uh, we didn't see it coming. We had people signed up. We thought we were going to be fine. But... Oh well. And it, again, it, it's what hurt the team that we played in the first place, was that they were short. Obviously, they were two against five, so that was a big difference. But it's more the fact that one tank does make a huge difference, especially if that tank's your scout giving you lines of sight. So, we end up camping here for a little bit. It's a, I mean, it's sound strategy for going with a quick 30 seconds, what should we do? I mean, it makes sense. But, as you'll see shortly, things quickly change for the worse, as they usually do. But, we figured, as you can hear me jiggling the ice around, I was like, oh, I'm going to start drinking at this point, because why not? But, yeah, so we, uh, we kind of just figured that we need to start camping. We camped this one. I forget what we end up doing the next one. We'll find out when we get there, I guess. Doesn't do anything to break combat. But yeah, I was uh, curious onto the cover here. I wasn't sure if moving your turret affects cover or not. But apparently, I was told that moving your turret actually does not affect or break your cover at all. It's only the movement of your tank, the firing of a gun, anything like that, or a little bit sticking out. But your gun and your turret movement do not affect that. That is something very valuable to know. So I'm actually fully concealed at the moment in terms of cover. And I wasn't... Uh, wasn't too sure on that initially. That's a very solid thing to know, though, is how the cover system works. And I wasn't 100% sure. I thought that moving your turret did break concealment, but according to my teammates, it isn't. So I guess uh, that was a very valuable thing to know. I didn't know it at the time. Now, we're buying time here. It's kind of a... Uh, as I say back in the background there... I, we're, if we're playing one short, it's kind of a thing that we're, you're probably not going to win. You so you make them work for it at least. Worst comes to worst is you draw it out so both teams don't get in. Well, that's that's the worst thing that can happen. I mean, it you could get a miracle and actually end up winning short, but realistically, it's the fact that you're going to be playing short that's going to hurt, hurt your chances, and you're just not going to be able to do it. So, playing short, we decided that we're going to make them work for it. We're going to set up the best defenses we can, come up with some sort of strategies. Holy hell. And as wow. you saw there, nothing was spotted by me, nothing was spotted by anyone. And then all suddenly I just get shot by everything on the board. They timed everything really well, and I don't know what spotted me, but whatever they had that spotted me was perfectly placed so that I didn't see him, and they saw me and were able to line up on me without me even twitching. So, I mean, it's... It's possible. I'm not sure how it happened, but we'll chalk it up to just luck, I guess. Luck or just bad luck on 
good luck on their end, bad luck on my end, or bad placement. Who knows? It happens. But yeah, that kind of uh, that kind of set us back right there, me going down right away. But luckily, their KV exposed himself right here, so we were able to take advantage of that with our Derp KV and our 107 KV both having to line up onto him. He's, of course, sitting there giving his team line of sight, though, as the artillery and PZ4s are able to range in on them. So it kind of was a, a nice little split that they did. I really wish I knew their strategies coming into the game. Obviously, if you knew the strategies coming in, you would uh, know how to counter it. But it's more the fact that it would be nice to know after the fact, or have a way to view after the fact what they were doing. Because they certainly had some interesting shots and interesting lines there that uh, certainly would have been nice to know for future reference that we could use. I mean, if anything else, we chalk this one up as a learning experience because playing short, you're going to lose. But we learned some things, I guess. <laughs> At least I hope we learned some things. Like don't hide in the bush when you think you have plenty of camo, but you actually don't. But yeah, so we do have a few problems here and there eventually. It's that the little PZ4 over on the other side of that hill, though, is playing cat and mouse, and of course he's also spotting us every time he does it. So that's actually a very solid thing. He's not wasting his time shooting, he's just trying to pop up so artillery gets some shots on us. So, I mean, it's a valid strategy, and it works really well, because that way they know exactly where we're sitting at all times, whereas we're wasting shots just trying to hit him, and we're not going to. As he appears again, though, well, no, he was actually shooting. It's the fact that we kept missing him because he was just only presenting his turret, which, obviously, a smaller profile, not a full tank. It's going to be a little harder for us to deal with. He's doing the right, he's doing the correct strategy, though. And eventually, though, he will eventually pop up, and he'll make that one little mistake. But it might, it might be a little while before we get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. So what can I say? But yeah. So, overall, we did practice this one. I don't... Well, not the strategy, but I mean this map. We practiced, but we didn't practice nearly as much as we should have. We only practiced maybe once or twice. We came up with that general strategy to go to the center, sit on the road, and use the range to our advantage. But it really uh, was contingent again on five people, and it really didn't allow for any flexibility in case we wanted to change it up. And we decided to change up to the two KVs, just for the fact we wanted some heavy hitters, and we saw what the other team had. Now here's the problem. We decided... It was after the fact that we were like, maybe we should have all consolidated and went for one tank as opposed to splitting our forces here. We hit the Hetzer and take care of him. But instead of going after that KV that we sh like we should have, our two KVs decided to split off and go into different angles. Well, what we should have done in hindsight was send both of our KVs against the one KV and then return back for this artillery piece. Unfortunately, though, He's get dividing our forces like this is not going to pay off, especially when that KV is in full hit points. And that wow. artillery had a great, great shot. So that was a uh, impressive hit that he did. I was able to take out our KV, which, like I said, if we had focused, we would have been a lot better. Now we missed our 152 shot right here with a derp gun at point-blank range, and that really sealed the deal at that point. I mean, it wouldn't have one-shotted him. It might have destroyed the gun so that we would have had the chance to reload and fire again. But, unfortunately, it gave them the, uh, the swift advantage there so that they were able to take out our tanks. Uh, dividing our forces is probably not the best idea, but it happens. All right, so, here we go at it again. The problem is this time, we are now down two to nothing. So... In order for us to come back and win, we need to win the next three games all out. The potential of doing so, not that great when you have a, a little disadvantage here of being understaffed by one person. So, what we decided to do was to go into the town over to the right of the north side and uh, make up a little defensive position up there, kind of similar to what we did in the south in the previous match. But hope for the best this time, and uh, see see what happens. Because in theory, we at least have more cover up here. I'll know about our sight ranges. That's why I'm going to actually hide directly behind the house this time because I didn't want to get one shotted by everything on the board again, which I still have no idea how that happened. But eh, it happens. 
So, yeah, we yeah. I decided to set up behind this house. We have everyone else set up in the village as well. I believe we have one guy kind of chilling back yeah, towards the, here, the point oh, again, just to down. give us a little bit of line of sight yeah. in case they do decide to start capping. And did, uh, oh, yeah. I don't know. It, it's, again, one of those things where you just have to improvise and it's nothing you can do but just hope for the best. Uh, you wouldn't think that a fifth tank at a tier two would make I'm a difference, but... Time. The ability to spot people and then, of course, being able to hit artillery makes a huge difference. Now, we were trying to place all our shots at the same time, but I never had a single shot on this KV. I think I had, like, a corner, and I wasn't about to expose my position by firing at him. Luckily, we nailed him pretty heavily, so the fact that he wasn't going to—he wasn't about to come out and help anytime soon. We effectively rendered him useless, except technically any tank without, you know being killed is still an effective tank in this game. It's just the fact that we'd make him play a little more cautiously this time and not be so uh, gung-ho about coming up on us like they did the past. So, now that we have one tank kind of eliminated, we kind of made it even. It's a little bit better this way. Now, it's, a, it's gonna be a bit of a delay though. This game, this one does go pretty long. We, uh, well, you, you'll find out. But yeah, in the meantime, it's something that you should probably end up doing is practicing a man short just to figure out what you're going to do in that circumstance of a disconnect, of people not showing up. If you play two people short, then yeah, there's there's no hope. But if you play one man short, technically you could still do it. If you practice it, know what you're supposed to do, and just expect it, you could probably get away with it. But, of course, us being at the disadvantage here because of the fact that we didn't practice it, nor were we uh, expecting it, and we kind of had banked on the fact we're going to have a scout, that's where our disadvantage comes from. So, something that really comes big into these tournaments is you really do need to practice. You need to learn the maps a lot more than we did for this one. We wanted to just take this one easy, see what happens. But, it really comes down to the fact you need to learn your lines of sight, figure out at what point you should be able to see other tanks, figure out on both sides where you think you would sit if you were the enemy team, where you want to sit, and how you'd counter those positions. These are things that we typically cover, but again, for this one we decided not to, and it, it shows. It really does make a difference. We kind of just came in with one game plan, and it didn't matter because... I would have almost went it, with the, uh, we American ended up playing short and weren't been. able to take advantage of it. Now, uh, the, the thing I is, the they always say yeah, that uh, no plan ever survives yeah. contact with the yeah. enemy. This is true, but so plans give you guidelines and ideas and tactics to follow. No, I'm Obviously, I'm not going to plan out to a T every like, five pixels I'm going to move or anything, but it still gives me an idea of what to expect, where I think things are going to come from, where I would sit if I was them, so on and so forth. Now, the tier limits for this, I never really uh, went into that. I'm, I apologize. Oh, yeah. You're limited to tier 5 mediums, tier 5 heavies, tier 4 those, uh, tank destroyers, tier 3 artillery and lights. I believe that was the extent of what you're allowed to use. And that's my phone going off again. Grr. So yeah, that was uh, the extent of what we were able to use. We, never, we decided we weren't going to use artillery because none of us are wanted to really use a tier 3 artillery. We just didn't feel it would be uh, good enough. And, uh, all honesty, I forgot the fact that you were able to use tier 4 tank destroyers. I thought you were only able to use tier 3. So, if that was the case, I probably would have used the American one with the 76 mil had I known about that, because that's a very powerful tank and a very powerful gun for what it is. I mean, I remember getting several kills using that tank. So, had I thought about it, yeah, it probably would have been better had we had five people to drop down to a tier four. But, oh well. So, luckily, one of our teammates just one-shotted their KB that was capping. And that was just complete surprise and worked out really well in our favor. I mean, who would have imagined you would have been able to get a one-shot kill with this thing? But, I mean, it... it yeah, it worked, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I decided to actually start repositioning though to get back towards the base in case I needed to help with the cap. So I'm gonna, I actually roll back behind other buildings, and eventually I go down into the gully just so that I prevent myself from getting hit entirely, and I can always just pop up over the hill if needed. 
Oh, that's what oh, I do now. Never mind. <laughs> I think there it's are been a while since I played this game. It was uh, this was recorded Saturday. It's now Monday night. The whole getting unpacked, everything else, doing lots of stuff, playing a Flames of War tournament or not Flames of War tournament, big big tank game in Flames of War on Sunday, preventing me from uh, editing this whole thing together on that time. I'm in a goalie. I'm so yeah, man. I'm just a little little bit behind here with this video. Ooh, well. <laughs> so yeah, I'm using the goalie to my advantage of the fact that I'm not going to get hit by artillery, nor will I get spotted, in theory, at least. But then again, we proved that one wrong when I got shot by everything on the board, hiding in a bush. So, if I could only have, as I just say here, if I could only have kicked out my, my commander to sit as a forward observer in a bush and just leave everyone behind, operate like at 50% of my crew operation, I don't know. It would have been funny to just have a Ford Observer sitting somewhere else as opposed to uh, me waiting for the team's, to teammates to spot. Artillery started ranging in at some point because we already have a guy wounded pretty heavily. And it's uh, their artillery was really Damn. spot on and he was really good. And that made a world of difference having that good <sighs> artillery man. We didn't have anyone. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure any of us could have filled in and done a great job in artillery. It's just none of our specialties. I do it plenty of times, but it's not the thing that I've, like I said, ever specialized in or worked towards. Just flat out. But it's, uh, so the heads are, yeah, the heads are gets one-shotted, which is excellent. Again, whittling them down. Brings it back to even at this point, though. We started, <laughs> we, uh... We had to kill one to make it even, and so we did, and then they killed one of ours, then we killed one of theirs, and so we're back to even, which is, uh, leaves us with their really damaged KV, and I don't remember what else it looks like from the little view I have, a T-34 maybe? I can't tell. Oh well. So, what I decided, well, as I, again, as I stated in the video, I wanted. I decided I might as well go and cap because they're focused on going or attacking our uh, our KVs and also to hop around and try and take the base. I decided at first, well, I'll just cruise all the way down and start capping on their base. But when we see the fact that their KV is here, we decided to go ahead and uh, take him out, which wasn't a problem. He kind of just sat there in the open, and so with enough fire. Be able to take him out, no problem. Yes. Got Eventually, him. there we go. Right, I'm gonna go cap. So, with him down, I'm gonna go hunt him down because we, could probably we took a look at the time, and we really didn't have as much time as I thought we did. So I had to haul to try and to try and find their artillery, which. Uh, so we find their last tank, and now we need. I need to go hunt down their artillery because. He's the guy who's going to cause us to draw if I can't find him. And artillery's uh, really hard to spot without that scout. I had no idea where to look. I didn't even... Didn't practice it. Didn't figure out where I'd place artillery, if anything. It uh, made it very difficult to figure out. So, I start hunting down this artillery like it's going out of style. I really need to find this thing. Because that KV gets eliminated without a problem. And it's uh, yeah, just... I that you guys might want to start got him. Artillery. Yep. Go, go, go. So I need to try and find this artillery. I have no idea where he's, he's sitting. Over, over the, we uh, start calling out positions where he we think he's, he's at. I start, hitting, or start heading to where he last hit me from. But unfortunately, it's not going to matter too much. The clock's going to wind down before I can even spot anyone. I have no idea where his position was. He, uh, he played a really good game. That artillery guy, he played out really well. Did a great job. He couldn't have played it any better. He either started running away or he uh, just did it well. So he drew it out, did a perfect job there, and forced us into the fourth game here where now the best we could do would be to cause them to draw out and thus no one from our grouping advances. But obviously he wants someone to advance. You don't want to kind of give someone the third round of bye week. That wouldn't be fair, and they'd just get a free pass into the finals. So, well... We decide yet again to come up with a strategy on the fly. So we figure we'll go back to what we practiced. We'll do it a little differently, though. We're going to have the Panzer IVs take the flanks, and we're going to have the KVs take the center lines. And we'll just uh, keep a tighter yeah, formation and just kind of hope that they come at us. Without the scout, though, we're kind of blind as to where we think they're going to come. 
Go so we do what we can. We're going to come up to the buildings, take up some defensive positions, and uh, kind of rely on what we practiced and what we had done in the past. Again, though, seeing as we didn't really practice it that much, it's going to make the world a difference. And had we practiced it, we might have been able to do things a little differently. But I'm going to go to this gray building up here, which gives me kind of a good protection from anything coming from the front. And yet I can still wheel around from the front or rear of it if I need to yeah, take out anything that comes into the center. But quickly, I'll learn that it's not going to matter. Because I actually will end up spotting any minute now, as I kind of just look around here. See, I figured that if anyone were to come out, they'd come out back there and I'd be able to spot them as they're coming out. But no, I'd actually spot the tanks as they're driving through the center of the town here any minute now. Come on! Don't make me look like a liar. Somewhere in here, they're going to pop out. And, yes. So, I will spot their team. Now, at any point now. Again, dragging it out. <laughs> we did, I really didn't expect them to come through the town in full force, but they did. And I luckily was able to track the Hetzer. Now, he had a really... Uh, awkward him. position here where I had maybe a singular shot on him through like two cross beams to hit him and I did what I could to try and take him out but they had a KV with gold rounds just hit me straight through take out my engine stop me right there in my track so I couldn't retreat and again those KVs I never really thought about using the KV with the gold round I really should have probably considered using that instead of the PZ4s again we were relying on the sight range but I spotted out their tanks, we were able to get the positioning good, or uh, get their positioning settled, so we just advanced to where they were going to be, to try and counter as to where they were, but sadly they, once they knew where we were because I fired upon them and obviously they saw our whole force, they kind of ranged in, took care of Lane who's in our KV with the derp, took care of our other PZ-4 rather, not 3. I sent Vaughn in to go for the cap because I figured they're all pushing through the town. We could probably cap behind them or at least force them into a draw position so where they would draw out this one again by having to come back towards us. Now, what did I do? We sent uh, Kurgan here to go try and spot him if they were to come around through the town just to at least delay them long enough so that our... Our town. KV could hopefully go and cap. Go into the town. So yeah, he's no, going no, to no. end up spotting them. Go. He's going to end up spotting the Panzer IV, rather. But no if he had really thought about it, what he should have done no was come around the opposite Got side of the rock. Way. Now, everyone's yeah. arguing here as to what they should have done. I figured if he were to come around the opposite side of the yeah, rock, he would have had the rock as cover. But, I mean, it, it ended nice. up working out fairly well. I guess my difference of opinion didn't really matter. Sadly, our Derp KV is going to get kind of countered here. He's not going to be able to spin around in time. The 107 is going to do what he can. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, no. We lost our KV, or I mean our Panzer IV, to the Hetzer. The 107 did what he could. The 152 Derp gun should have stayed in his position, but we got a little over anxious, just trying to eliminate him. And uh, what we could have done was taken him out, but instead kind of revealed our position there, lost the KV unnecessarily. Luckily, though, due to some odd reasoning, we're going to end up spotting their Hetzer and taking care of that thing real quick. Because he was already heavily damaged from me. He didn't really do too much to our KV, which is nice. I guess he wasn't using uh, gold rounds, maybe, because that would be the only thing that explained him not doing that much damage. Luckily, we get the uh, right, KV so here as well, and now it's coming down to the: do we go and hunt down the KV? Do we hunt down the the no, artillery again, or do we go for the cap? Go for the cap. And I I instruct him to go for the cap. In hindsight, maybe we should have went back for our cap, because that way we could have uh, we could have probably found the artillery by going to our cap, or at least would have been able to hit him had he come for the cap, either causing a draw or a victory. But instead, we figure, well, if you can get there in time and go for the cap, that would give us the option to uh, 
tie a draw from capping, force him to come back to counter our KV, or it would have also uh, allowed us to win had we uh, gone for the cap. But for some odd reason, due to lack of communication here, Vaughn decided to stop and start sniping. And I kept instructing him that we needed to get into the cap because well, capping we would have won. Now, cap you will not get to now, the cap in time. See, unfortunately, the KV is a lot slower here, and so when uh, when things eventually happen exactly how I called it, we're not going to have time to get our KV back there to go for the cap. Because right about here, he starts capping, and you have five seconds after the cap finishes with which to tie it up. Sometimes you get it in game, sometimes you don't. But as you can see here, five already passes, and then um, you end up not having enough time because the KV takes forever to roll around. But sadly, it was just lack of communication. Tried to, we didn't really have enough. We were, I was, we were frustrated for the most part. Just the simple fact that we had a bunch of people not show up. We didn't have solid strategies, and. Uh, it ends up not paying off here at this point. We did what we could. We played underhanded. I feel that if we had a last tank, it would have made a world of difference. But yeah, not having that fifth tank, gonna, um, nothing you could do. The scout would have made probably a little bit more difference. But we did the best we could with the time we had, the group we had, and the lack of strategies. So next tournament, we're going to come into it with a different mindset. We learned a lot from our mistakes here. Uh, it happens. So we wish these guys good luck. I don't know what happens to them. Uh, they end up playing last night, I believe. I have no idea how that turned out. Didn't pay attention to the tournament at all this time. It's kind of a uh, just bad timing for the tournament. So I want to thank you guys for tuning into this episode of my Let's Play World of Tanks. It's uh, a different uh, little, again, it's a tournament thing. So things get a little different and hectic. So again, thanks for tuning into this episode. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, at, uh, at Darkling, I have a link in the description. Again, ratings are much appreciated. Uh, if you guys would please rate and subscribe, I appreciate it. And again, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.